morning and today I wanted to talk to you about a little engineer friend of mine. I've always been more inclined to pick up a pencil and try and draw a picture, but I know some of you, having taught a lot of you guys, are more inclined to want to solve math problems or talk about how to create a robot than try and draw a flower with me. So today, for my engineering friends, I've brought you a book titled Rosie Revere Engineer. This book was written by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. And the reason I brought this book to you today is because I know that all of your rooms are just a little messy. You guys are all very, very young and very inspired and it's very incredibly important for you guys to have a messy room. And I wanted to bring you a book that highlights the messy room and teaches you what you can do with it. The thing about me is that my room was never clean. If you've ever come in and studied at my office or come to a weekend camp here, you'll know how clean my two couches seem. I know, they're pearly white and I refuse to let you go on them with your shoes on. However, my room at home is a different story. My brother and my mom, or my father, we can always attest to the fact that my room looks like it's been hit by a tornado once or twice in a year. And that would be an understatement to how disgusting my room is sometimes. And this book is one that makes me feel a little better about the mess that is my room, as I can tell people that it's the trash that I keep that makes me an engineer. Although I may not be inclined towards any kind of STEM, let alone engineering, I am a self-proclaimed chemist because I do learn chemistry in my school, which makes me, in part, a very smart kid. Let's start with Rosie Revere, the engineer. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of being a great engineer. In Leela Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie sat shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineering stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under her bed where they'd never be seen. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooped over one eye and made fine inventions for her uncles and aunts, a hot dog dispenser and helium pants. The uncle she loved the most was zookeeper Fred. She made him a hat to keep snakes off his head. From parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps pythons away. If you have never had the pleasure of having some silly cheese string, I highly recommend that you do. It is a little substance trapped in this little can, and when you squeeze the top of the can, it oozes this yellow, goldish cheddar cheese. It's the most American cheddar you can ever have, all in the simplicity of a bottle. You can put it on a cracker, Ritz if you like, and it's the cheesiest cheese of them all. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud, but Fred slapped his knee and chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears to all the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed, and dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred said. Oh, I truly, truly do. But Rosie Revere knew that it could not be true. She stuck the cheese hat in the back of her shelf, and after that day, she kept her dreams to herself. Have you ever felt like Rosie Revere in this situation, where you have an invention that you think is truly life-changing that nobody else seems to understand? Have your inventions been laughed at? I want you to think of one that you can remember where your invention that you were super proud of wasn't as appreciated as you would like. Hey guys, remember when I asked if you guys could think of a situation where you felt like Rosie Revere? 
when you felt like your invention that you were super proud to share with everybody was met with laughter instead of embrace? Remember that feeling when you were perplexed, confused, maybe a little upset? I want you to draw that invention one more time, whether it be the apartment building that you created by hand using cardboard boxes, or it was the time you fished out the fish from the fish tank. Well, that was a little bit of a rhyme scheme. And I want you to write down what you would name your invention and what you needed to create it. And then I want you to tell me all about your magical invention the next time you guys see me. Bye, guys.